In the UK, most of us work hard and pay our taxes. Most people basically, intrinsically, won't fiddle. That everybody should contribute towards the services we expect in this country. And we generally agree that it's right that a proportion of what you earn should go into a pot that's there to help you should you need it. But that money doesn't always find its way to the right people. Those on a middle income pay their tax, so why shouldn't those that earn more money do the same? I get very angry about people cheating, because that's what it is, isn't it? There are big changes taking place in the welfare system here in the UK. And now it's more important than ever that the right help gets to the right people. This is the world of saints and scroungers. Then there are those in need of a helping hand. A man determined to earn his own living despite being born with an unpredictable condition that can hospitalise him for weeks at a time. I felt like my body was lifeless. This time I thought definitely this was it. For now, though, it's goodbye to the scroungers who are dodging their dues and hello to those we call our saints. People who do everything to make sure that those in need get what they deserve. Living with a disability comes with plenty of challenges, but you would hope that once it's clear what you're dealing with, people would recognise that and give you a bit of a break. However, there are some conditions that don't conform to the idea of what a disability should look like and how it should behave. And that can make life very tough. And one disorder that doesn't follow the norm is sickle cell. It's estimated that around 12,500 people in Britain have sickle cell anemia, but it's largely an invisible condition and many people don't really understand it. A genetic blood disorder is most common in people of African and Caribbean descent. People who are affected by sickle cell have an abnormality of the hemoglobin in their blood. The sort of hemoglobin causes their red blood cells to change from a round shape to a banana shape, a sickle. That's where it gets its name from. And um, when blood is flow flowing through their body, it starts getting stuck like a traffic jam. It's not reaching all parts of their body. This causes immense pain known as a crisis that can hospitalise them for weeks on end. And it's not just the pain that sufferers have to worry about. With vital organs being starved of oxygen, this can cause long-term damage, strokes and lower life expectancy. 34-year-old Addy from London lives with the condition. When the crisis starts, your whole body shuts down. You can't move. Even to grab the phone to call the ambulance is very, very difficult. Even to walk to the bathroom, it stops you because your body is in pain. You can't stand up. You know, everything is weakened. You just feel like, you feel like your life is about to end. Addie's mother discovered before her son was born that he had the condition. When I was pregnant with Addie, they took my blood and, you know, check it and they realized that he's going to have sickle cell anemia. And um, I was advised to terminate the pregnancy. Addie's mother couldn't bear the thought of an abortion. So despite being told her child could only live for one year, she continued with the pregnancy. The first year, it wasn't too bad. Second year, it started, you know, having little crises. And, um, but I was lucky because I'm, I'm a nurse, so I have an idea how to look after him, but it, it was not easy. Growing up with sickle cell and the agony it sometimes brings was hard for Addy, and sometimes he got his family to help ease the pain. Back then, if I'm having crisis, like, for example, if, if, if I have a pain on my leg, I used to ask my younger brother to sit on my leg to put pressure on the pain to just try to so that the pain does not spread. So he will sit in that position for a long time until I feel for about. Addie had a difficult childhood involving long absences from school due to his illness. But sickle cell doesn't just bring physical pain. Emotionally, it can be hard to deal with too. I don't want people to treat me differently. I know I have sickle cell, you know, and 
I just want to feel, I just want to feel like I'm just like you, you understand? But I'm not, I'm not. So we keep it quiet to ourselves. We don't, I think we find it very embarrassing. I just didn't want people to know that I was sick because you look fine this day, the next thing. They will, they will be asking question, where are you, where are you? you will be gone for two weeks, you will be gone for three weeks because you're in the hospital. Addy isn't alone. Many sickle cell sufferers are ashamed of their condition. Comfort and Diva is a regional care advisor for a charity that's been set up to raise awareness. So do you find that a lot of um, sickle cell anemia sufferers fail to come forward? Yes. A lot of them are living in isolation for fear of being stigmatised. So what effect does that then have on their, their lives, their expectation of life? Socially, they are isolated, they are excluded. They don't have a good quality of life. All they know is going into hospital and back home. They don't participate in activities. They don't know what is going out there or things that they, uh, services that they can access. But sufferers shouldn't really feel embarrassed. Sickle cell is an inherited disorder that has a one in four chance of occurring when both parents have the trait. The condition's unbearable pain can be triggered by a number of factors, including the weather, stress levels, and dehydration. So you've got um, a serious condition that can render you really unable to do anything through pain and, and, and discomfort for weeks. For but, weeks. But you can't predict when it will strike. No. You see, with sickle cell, it's very unpredictable. You can walk one minute, you look fine, but the next minute, you can't even move. It's, they will just call an ambulance to come. Each individual case is different, though. Some people have more severe pain. They have more se chronic severe uh, crisis. Some people don't even have crisis for a period of time. It's a chronic condition that you cannot tell when it will come. For Addy, the worst crisis he's ever experienced came in 2005, when he was working in a department store in London. I went to work on that day, that morning. I was feeling fine. Everything was OK, like my body was fine. I was running up and down, trying to serve customers. And I went to speak to one of my colleagues. And my whole body just, I just felt like something was wrong. And I sat on the floor. And I couldn't move my body after that. Ah, it was hard for me to breathe, so I had to tell my colleague to call me an ambulance. Before I knew it, my chest was aching. Felt like somebody was standing on my chest and I couldn't breathe. I remember the ambulance came. I was on the sixth floor. The ambulance came and they took, put me in a wheelchair with a gas mask on. It was not, I didn't have pain, but it was, it felt like my body was gone. Like my pain, everything was shut down. I felt like my body was lifeless. And I thought I was going to, I was going to, this time, I thought definitely this was it. That whole crisis experience took me at least five months for me to properly recover because it was a, it was a serious one and I was scared. Had he coped by writing songs to express his frustration with the condition, but he still needed to pay the bills and his future was looking uncertain. It was tough. I couldn't do stuff that I normally do. I was living by myself. Bills were spying up because I was like, I, I was trying to get a job. And when you do get a job, it's, when you're sick, you tell your manager, oh, you've been missing for two weeks, you have lost your job. OK, start all over again, you know? And so it was, it was very unbalanced for me at that point in my, in my, in my life. Addy had claimed job seekers allowance, but as he didn't consider himself disabled, he had no idea that he could have access to other forms of benefits. It's a problem that's all too common. It's frustrating that people are not claiming benefits that they can apply for, simply because they don't know about that benefit being there. So it's very important for organisations like ourselves to let them know that this is nothing to be ashamed about. You you are able to look after yourself and keep well, but at the same time, there are other times when you're not. So, and this is why certain benefits are there to help you financially to, 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 to look after yourself. 
Addy didn't realise there was a whole support network out there. Join us later to find out if the Society can help him. It's time to leave the tiny minority trying to cheat the system and turn our attention to those who really need help. Sickle cell sufferer Addy was finding it hard to cope with an unpredictable condition which made it difficult for him to work when, like most sufferers, all he wanted to do was live a normal life and earn a living. With the sufferers that you've met, do they generally um, want the same things everyone else wants. Yes, oh yes, oh yes. They want relationships. They want to go about doing their daily activities like anyone else. They would like to go out to work. Even though they are having pains, they would like to go out there and work. Sickle cell does not prevent you from achieving your goals in life. So most of them do as much as they can. Some of them are IT consultants, some of them are doctors, they are nurses. But the the difficulties they face is that most employers cannot keep them for long because when they are in crisis, it might take one or two weeks in hospital and not turning up for work, always in pain, giving, telling them they feel that they are just giving excuses. There's nothing wrong with them because sickle is invisible. It's not something you can see physically. So you do, people do not understand. When somebody with sickle tells you he's in pain, they are really sick and they are really in pain. Addy needed to work to pay his bills, so he managed to get a job as a security officer, but it was a two-hour journey from his home. It, it was not the job I wanted. It was not the, the stuff that I wanted, and it was cold, it was winter. Uh, there was one incident that happened that I was having a crisis. I was having one of those minor crises that I, could, I couldn't really manage. I needed to go home. And I told my manager that I'm having a crisis. Please, can I go home? Can I do this? He said, if I go home, your job is not going to be here for you again. And me, because I was desperate, I needed money to survive, I needed money to eat, I needed money to pay my electricity bills and stuff like that. So I didn't go home. I just stayed there because I didn't want to lose the job. When he made that statement, I was very disgusted. My my blood, my blood was boiling inside. I feel like there's no one that, that understands what I'm going through right now. And I don't know what happened to me that day. Something just told me to write this, that song that was coming to my head. Writing the song helped Addy deal with his feelings of frustration, but he really needed practical support. Having heard about his predicament, a specialist nurse put him in touch with the Sickle Cell Society. It was here that he met Yamadi Thomas. I first met Addy, I think it was 2007. He was referred to me because he was having crisis and he needed help. As part of her job, Yamadi visited Addy at home. When I did the home visit, I did notice that he didn't have a proper bed. His mattress was on the floor. So um, financially, I don't think Addy was very um, um, financially secure when I met him and I don't think he was getting some of the benefits that he could have applied for. Yamadi helped him to access a welfare fund, which provided him with a new bed. She also encouraged him to apply for disability living allowance, but at first his applications were unsuccessful. This happens a lot for those with sickle cell, as it's a hard condition to define. So the forms are there to describe a permanent condition, but with yes. sickle cell, what you're talking about is something that comes and goes. Yes. And so that makes the form quite difficult, difficult to fill out. Difficult for them to fill out, yes, yeah. because their condition fluctuates. It's unpredictable. One minute you're OK, the next minute, what do you say? You say on the form, OK, today I feel OK, I was able to do this for myself. The next minute on the next form you say you can't even get up when you're in crisis, you can't do anything for yourself. It was a frustrating time for Addy, and he told Yamadi about the song he'd written, Feel My Pain. I then thought, that's very good, and we're going to do something with Feel My Pain. And I um, then helped to try and um, get a grant from one of these organisations in Lambeth, and we got it. And it was for him to produce Feel My Pain on CD and DVD. And then we did a launch. Take 
Daddy's song not only helped to promote the society, but it gave him a renewed sense of purpose. He decided to go to university. He graduated with a degree in film studies, but was still struggling financially. So the society put him in touch with a community nurse who helped him fill out the disability living allowance application again. This time he was successful, and it wasn't just a weekly payment. The disability living allowance mobility component means that in certain cases, the claimant's also entitled to get help buying or leasing a car. I always feel very pleased when I see that a client is able to get something that would allow them to either go to this meeting or come to this workshop or, you know, or, or do something that d doesn't tire them out. And the fact that he got a car through that was quite was good that he could go out and you know try and live a normal life since discovering the society Addy's financial situation has improved he now has the benefits to which he's entitled and it's making his life easier the society has really made me understand that there's help out there there's help out there if you really search for it very often young men with sickle cell they're very frustrated and because of the way they are stereotyped and all that, they tend maybe not to achieve as much, but um, Ade has overcome that and he's just doing his thing, you, you know. Un unless he's ill, you wouldn't even know he had the condition, really. You know, he's, he's getting on with life. Addy's currently working in a hospital canteen to earn some money while he continues to pursue his dream of working in films. You can do whatever you dream of doing, as long as you don't let sickle cell to block it from you. Take that off your mind and you'll get, you get far. It takes a lot to be able to cope with a debilitating disorder like sickle cell, but Addy's living his life to the full, and in the process, by raising awareness through his song, he's giving something back to the society that's helped him so much. Peace.